Speculation alert, the following video contains information about Alpha 20 that is subject to change. Some aspects will be purely speculation on how the developers may or may not proceed moving forward. Welcome to the second video in my 7 days to die Alpha 20 in-depth series, where I go over some of the changes coming in Alpha 20. Provide context to the problems I think these features will be intended to solve, cover the community's opinions on these changes as well as my own, and then analyse what effect I think it will have on the game. As I said in the first Alpha 20 in-depth video, there is next to no gameplay of Alpha 20 available, so any gameplay you will be seeing in today's video is my own modded gameplay. As always, links to those mods are in the description. Also, this video is not going to cover the absolute nightmare that is the robotic drone as that deserves its own video. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's go over what weapons and changes to existing weapons are coming in 7 Days to Die Alpha 20. The first set of weapons we will see added to 7 Days to Die in the next update is pipe guns. For those of you that don't know what a pipe gun is, it is a type of weapon which falls under the improvised firearms category. They're made from pipes, hence the name pipe gun. In recent years, however, pipe guns have become a staple of survival and post-apocalyptic games, Fallout 4 being a notable example. Well, the fun pimps seem to have decided that these weapons would be a good fit for 7 Days to Die. And now we have some images for all four of the new pipe guns coming in Alpha 20. First up, we have the Pipe Pistol, which seems to be a revolver. We can see the unmodified version in this image here that the fun pimps posted on Twitter. And here we can see the unmodified version from the first person perspective. We've also been shown the pipe machine gun, which looks to be the step before either the SMG or the AK-47. I would imagine it is an automatic weapon. We have not seen an unmodified version of this gun yet, but you can get the idea from this image. Naturally, we also have the pipe shotgun. Here we can see the unmodified version. And here we can see the modified version. It looks to be a single shot and maybe a replacement for the blunderbuss. Interestingly, it does seem to be compatible with a suppressor. And the final pipe gun we have is the pipe rifle, possibly the step before the hunting rifle. We don't have many images of the pipe rifle, but it looks like it's going to be a simple single shot rifle that's going to be less powerful than the hunting rifle. Joel, co-owner and co-founder of the Fun Pimps, said in a developer livestream from October 2020 that pipe weapons would be craftable on day one. I should also mention that there is concept art for a lever action rifle and references to it, but I do not know if that is a reference to the regular pipe rifle or if there is another rifle type of weapon coming that will be lever action. There is also a new melee weapon coming, the Pipe Baton. For a bit of context, one of the worst weapons in 7 Days to Die Alpha 19 is the Stun Baton. Now I've always just assumed that it was just a bad weapon, but it seems we've been comparing the Stun Baton to the wrong weapons. The Stun Baton is a Tier 2 weapon, and the new Pipe Baton is going to be a Tier 1 weapon, so it seems that we're on a path to getting a full set of batons for the Electrocutioner perk, which probably needs to be renamed now that I think about it. One thing I have found in the game's files is a reference to both the Baton at Tier 1 and something called the Plasma Baton at Tier 3. While we haven't heard anything about the Plasma Baton coming in Alpha 20, it seems that with the introduction of the Tier 1 Pipe Baton, which will be on the same tier as weapons like the Wooden Club and the Stone Sledgehammer, that we will be getting a Plasma Baton at least in the coming years to compete with the Steel Club and the Steel Sledgehammer. The final change I'm going to cover is the retexturing of some of the older weapons, along with a lot more weapon attachments being given physical models. Currently, a lot of weapons have attachments that cannot be seen. For example, you can suppress a double barrel shotgun, but it has no visual effects. It seems that Alpha 20 is going to tackle a lot of issues like that. So far, we've seen a new skin for the 44 Magnum as well as some of its attachments. Interestingly, it does seem that we are now able to suppress the Magnum. The new skins do seem to be a bit more worn and detailed than the originals, it will be interesting to see how much of that detail is inevitably lost when it is implemented into the game to maintain performance. The next reskin we have is the most controversial by far, the M60. The M60 has taken on a much more makeshift appearance it would seem now. Once again we can see a suppressor which currently cannot be equipped on an M60 and even more interestingly the M60 seems to have equipable sights which currently cannot be equipped on the M60. So the M60 
Dynasty is going to be a much more versatile weapon in the next update with these new attachments available. But the reason this is controversial is because a lot of players have reacted negatively to the new look, preferring the old military M60 look we have now. The next reskin we've seen, and my personal favourite, is the SMG skin. We can see a lot more effort has been put into giving attachments a visual presence on the weapons. I have no idea why they use a spoon as a charging handle, but what do I know, I'm European. Aside from the tactical spoon, I think this is a really nice reskin, especially the variations in stock length presumably attached to the retracting stock mod. We may see more reskins in the coming weeks, but this video was written on the 15th of June, so keep that in mind before commenting about how I missed some massive change. Also, before we move on, I do remember seeing Madmo reference a skin change coming to the marksman rifle, but I cannot, for the life of me, find that post on the forums anymore. I've opted to not truly include it in the video, but I thought I would mention the possibility of a marksman rifle reskin. Just before I put on my analysis hat and jump into what these changes mean for the game, if you're enjoying the video, be sure to hit that subscribe button to see the rest of the Alpha 20 in-depth series. I'll be making more videos like this in the coming weeks, and of course, I'll be continuing my tutorial content into Alpha 20. Anyway, let's get back to the video. So what problems were these features trying to fix? Well, the weapon reskins are simply a necessity for release. The fun pimps have said that they will not release this game fully until they have created HD textures and models for all weapons and zombies and as many blocks as possible in the game. The introduction of the pipe baton seems to be an attempt to encourage players to use the baton class of weapons as currently the stun baton is only available in the mid game and is only useful in the mid game. The introduction of the pipe baton will allow intellect players to go harder into their main attribute without having to rely on turrets or specking into strength to use a melee weapon. We will of course need a tier 3 baton to make batons fully viable in the end game, but this seems to be the groundwork for that. But what problem were the pipe guns trying to fix? Well, my best guess is that the fun pimps want players to truly be able to play without melee. With the ability to craft pipe weapons on day 1, it is reasonable to assume you could do a playthrough of Alpha 20 without having to rely on melee weapons or bows, but for the most part the pipe weapons seem to be a creative vision change. I've never really seen anyone ask for it, but it does seem that someone high up at the fun pimps simply wanted pipe guns in the game and made it happen. So how has the community responded to these changes? There is a part of the community that is very unhappy with the new weapon changes. The biggest complaint I've seen is that these new pipe weapons aside from the baton are the wrong change to make. Many think the fun pimps are focusing on the wrong end of the game. I think all players can agree that Seven Days to Die's early game is at the strongest part of the game. It doesn't really need rebalanced. The part of the game that needs more content and rebalancing is the end game. I'm sure many players would have preferred a tier after the advanced weapons like the M60. For example, if I was adding new weapons to the game, I would make a tier 4 after tier 3, including weapons like an anti-material rifle for the sniper class, a revolver action shotgun, a new type of machine gun, maybe something more modern than the M60, a machine gun like the M249, and another pistol class weapon, maybe an upgrade from the SMG5, something like the MP7 springs to mind. I would imagine making those four weapons ultra rare and putting them at the other end of looting progression would make a lot more players happy than putting four pipe guns at the start of the game. The start of the game is already fantastic and I imagine most of us want more in the end game. At this point I barely play past day 35 because I've done everything. Players have also had mixed reactions to the weapon reskins, most are happy to to see that the weapons are getting some much needed graphical upgrades. One complaint I have seen people saying that the fun pimps should be focusing on something more important than this. However, you have to remember that the fun pimps have employees and those employees specialise in different things. Just because the art team is going hard on upgrading textures does not mean anything else is being left behind. Because what else is the art team going to do? Are you going to have them fixing bugs? They are not qualified for that and it would not make sense. These new changes will not and cannot affect the speed of updates in any way shape or form. So for anyone who is complaining about the artistic changes purely because they think the developers are doing this instead of something else is just objectively incorrect. However, some players do just have a problem with those art changes because they genuinely do not like the direction it has been taken, which is a lot more reasonable. Many players really do not like this take on the weapons as it is a much more post-apocalyptic feel than they would have liked, and that is fair. 
The makeshift and ragged look of the weapons does seem to imply that the Seven Days to Die apocalypse has been going on much longer than players initially thought, and some players have even accused the fun pimps of ripping off Fallout 4 or Rust, purely due to the popularity of those games and the prominence of makeshift style weapons in those games. Given that the fun pimps have said the three main inspirations for Seven Days to Die were Fallout, Minecraft and The Walking Dead, it does seem to lend credibility to the claims that the fun pimps are simply copying Fallout. My own addition to this claim would be to point out that when skills were added to the game they were very similar to how skills worked in older Fallout games like Fallout 3 and New Vegas. However, at some point, Bethesda Game Studios removed conventional skills from Fallout and in Fallout 4, released in 2015, we saw a perk system put in place of the skills. Then, strangely enough, in Seven Days to Die Alpha 17, which came out in 2018, three years later, we saw all the skills disappear from Seven Days to Die and they were all replaced with perks which were dependent on the level of a given attribute they are governed by which is exactly what Fallout 4 had done three years earlier. Fallout 4 also had pipe weapons, and here we are. Seven Days to Die has yet another feature that is seemingly inspired by Fallout. But taking off my tinfoil hat, I would say that the copycat issues the players have is certainly valid, although it could really just be inspiration or a coincidence. I should also mention that a lot of players are just really happy to have more things to kill zombies with which is a very positive outlook on the change that I can hardly disagree with. And almost everyone agrees that while this isn't the news they were hoping for, the art team has done a fantastic job creating those models and textures for the new and old guns, regardless of the direction they have been told to take it in. Finally, it seems the pipe baton has been met with mostly lukewarm reception, with most players not being particularly excited about it, but nobody seems to have reacted in any way negatively about the addition, which is a good sign. Ultimately, it seems that these changes have been met with mixed receptions and the divide between what the developers want, what some players want and what some other players want is becoming more apparent. I think most of these changes are not going to negatively affect the game, but I would also think that they are not going to have a hugely positive effect on the game. I think the pipe weapon changes we will really have to play with to find out how they are going to affect the game. On paper, it seems that the addition of pipe weapons will have a minimal effect on the game, but it really all hinges on how the fun pimps will execute that idea. It could be completely pointless. It could be negative by making the early game too easy or too hard, or it could just fit in really well and be great. It's hard to tell from the limited info we have for these weapons. But what about you? Are you excited about the new weapons? Do you like the new textures coming for the old guns? Is there anything coming that you really do not like? Let us know down in the comments. But with that, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.